Hello friends, it's Cindy Brumbaugh from CindyLeeBDesigns.com, independent stamping up demonstrator. Today I'm starting my first Christmas card of the season using a bundle that is gonna be in the holiday catalog that'll be open for ordering on September 5th. You should be getting your catalogs in the mail between the second and third week of this month of August. And so we are gonna be using the Making Christmas Bright bundle, which includes the stamp set in photopolymer, and also the Christmas Light Bulb Builder Punch. So these come bundled um, at a 10% discount in the new catalog. You'll find the stamp set on page seven when you get that catalog. So we're also going to be adding in some pine boughs to this stamp to this card with the stamped pine boughs. And we're gonna be using the Christmas Pine stamp set. Now that was in last year's holiday catalog and carried over into our annual catalog. So we're gonna be using this really nice thick pine bow there on this card. So let's get started. So you can see the color palette for this card is the new Call Me Clover and the bright poppy Parade and also to keep with the bright theme of the bright green and the bright red I use the daffodil delight a nice bright yellow. So we're going to be using our Layering squares now remember those layering squares. They have such a nice tight border around them I love that so we're going to be using the largest square and the largest scallop square from the layering squares Framelits and what I did is I just cut out one with whisper white the square and then the scallop that will border it was in poppy parade But the first thing we have to do on this card is stamp the pine boughs so I'm using half a sheet of our cardstock, Call Me Clover, and it is 11 inches by four and a quarter, and then I scored it at five and a half. So 11 inches by four and a quarter, and I scored it at five and a half. So that'll be a card that opens from the bottom this way. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is stamp those pine boughs. Now, I try to keep a clean surface, so I'm gonna bring back a scratch paper here so that when I have the image that stamps over the side. So we open up. Now remember these new stamp sets are quite, quite different than the other ones. Our muscle memory wants us to push it and pull it this way, but it just opens on a hinge. And then after you, and sometimes you, there we go. Um, they take a little bit of time to get loosened up. So you open it on the hinge and then you just slide it in and make sure it's in place. It's always best to have it in place when you're inking it. So what we're going to do is ink up that large pine bough. And I just scattered the pine boughs around so that it was just kind of um, going along so you could see some of it. And I like the tone on tone here with the Call Me Clover ink. And then I just stamped a pine bough and then I re-inked it again. I think it had a nice dramatic effect having the tone on tone. And then I just put another pine bow here. Pry a little pressure. Sometimes I count one, two, three, four, five. And then we have another pine bow there. And so we're going to ink again. And I do believe I just kind of put one that overlapped right there. Just getting one, two, three, four, five. There we go. And remember the middle part's gonna be covered by our sentiment, the focal point of the card. So it doesn't matter if there's not that stamping in there. And then I just put one here, another one. I love the brightness of this green. Although Mossy Meadow is gonna be a welcome back for me because I love using it on Christmas cards, but this is such a pretty, pretty green. Really bright. So we're going to finish this up with one more pine bow on the other side. Let's just bring this down to get a little more there. You'll notice I like to stamp a lot of the times, especially with the larger stamp, as I like to stamp. I think I have more control over my inking on my stamps whenever I'm doing it upside down. So you might try that if you sometimes get a lot of um, overage of ink around um, that creates a halo on your card. So try doing it this way and just see how it works. Okay, so there we've got the background on the card stamped. The next thing we're going to do is work on this focal point here. So what I did is I cut out that white square and I wanted to stamp the sentiments first because then I know I will have um, the room for the light bulbs when they go in there. So I just used Poppy Parade 
I just inked it up with that nice bright red and then I stamped it as close to the top as I could get in that corner. So the poppy parade. Oh, it looks like I have a little hair there. Oh well. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is stamp the bottom sentiment and that's that the poppy parade was May your Christmas be and then I wanted to put the bright and I'm using the daffodil and I'm just going to ink up. I love that it's photopolymer so you can easily see where you're stamping and I just put that down way, way close to the corner there. So the next thing is we want to put the, the Christmas string here, the, the electric there that's the string for the bulbs. Now I use the Call Me Clover once again for that. And one thing about this is when you go to stamp this, You'll see on here, I had some trial and error and I was gonna use my Stamparatus, but then it was just easier to stamp it just using my hand. But just keep that line that your light bulbs are gonna, the strand that your light bulbs are gonna be hanging on, keep it super close to the top of the sentiment here. Because when you go to stamp that, your light bulbs, you're gonna want enough room for this light bulb in between the two sentiments. So we can just ink that up inking here with the Call Me Clover. And then you'll notice when you get up close to that sentiment, your string is gonna go off each side of the card. So there we've got our string. And then while we still, while I'm thinking about it, let's just ink up the top and put a sprig here. Now, of course, this is a big waste of ink here, so if you can just get the edges of your ink on your stamp, it's much better than wasting all that ink. And then I just put some down here so it wasn't so stark there. Boop, there we go. So now let's just get rid of the scratch paper here so we can see a little bit better. The next thing we're gonna do is make our light bulbs our Christmas light bulbs. We're gonna be using the Christmas light bulb builder. And what I did is I went and just scavenged out all my scrap papers that are in my drawers here. And then I wanted to do a yellow light bulb. And I just do, there we go. And then I wanted to do a Call Me Clover green one. And this is where you can really use up all of your scraps in your scrap. And then a poppy parade. And how many times do we have little pieces of our metallics, our gold foil, silver foil left over? So I had this one and I wondered, oh, is it gonna fit? And so if you pop it in here, instead of wasting, you're gonna pop out there, just pop it in exactly where you need it. And I'm gonna need three of the ends of the bulbs. Boom, done. So we're now going to go ahead and build up our light bulbs. So I found the easiest way to do this is by putting some, make sure you've got your light bulbs in the right direction because you know how a punched image has a, like a good side and a bad side. So I'm putting all the good sides down. No, I want to put, I want to put it on the good side. Okay, so I'll put a tiny little bit of Tombow glue right where you can see the bend where the straight goes into the um, curve of the light bulb. Then we'll take and put the gold tops onto the light bulbs. And it's real easy to tell because there's a a definite, um, there's a definite, definite curve right here, and then this can just go right along that curve line to have your light bulbs looking all pretty. My stamping girls in Florida who come to my classes know that my Christmas tree is up all year round. Yes, all year round. We never. It started when um, my mother-in-law was sick about uh, five or six years ago, and we said we'd keep the Christmas tree up until she was able to come down and then it just 
turned into the Christmas tree just stays up. Truth is, is I have to get my husband or my sons to put the big containers up in the attic in the garage and they never do it so I said okay Christmas trees up all year round <laughs> so here we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put this onto our poppy parade scallop square I'm just going to put a little glue in the corners since I don't have my snail with me handy right now okay so we're just going to Find out which is the good side. And that has a nice bright red to it. There we go. And now we're going to pop the light bulbs on there. And I think I'm gonna go with my middle one first. And see, you wanna have that kind of right on the line which is a little hard for me to see, otherwise you're gonna see the top of my head when I bend over into the camera. So I'm hoping this works for you and you guys can see it. Then you just put on the third one. And I just put that there. And I like how the yellow kind of goes over into the green. So there we've got our focal point on our card. So let's go ahead and put some dimensionals on the back to pop it up even more. What would we do without our dimensionals? They add so much to a card. Just Even just a simple little circle popped up on a card is a, just makes such a difference. So we're gonna take off our little hexagons that I'm sure. Where is the place that you, the most obscure place that you have found one of those dimensional hexagon backs. You'll have to tell me. I find them everywhere. So we're just gonna center that on the front of the card. And then for the inside of the card, I used a four by five and a quarter inch piece of Whisper White. And then I just stamped using the Poppy Parade, the friends make the season shine. And look at this cute, image here too. It has like the shimmering light that would be around a candle or a light and then I just popped it with the daffodil delight and right in the corners of that sentiment. So inside the on the outside of the card you're seeing the call me clover, the poppy parade and the daffodil delight. And so when you open the card you see the call me clover the poppy parade and the daffodil delight. So I like to make sure that I get all the colors and use them on the card. So there you go, the first Christmas card of the season. Um, a nice simple card, um, but recall that this stamp set, you can also stamp all of these images with your inks and then easily pop them out with a punch. How easy is that? And it's just got making spirits bright as a sentiment, a cute little circle that can go around some of your other sentiments. And this light bulb here, I was gonna put this on the inside and then you could actually color each of these light bulbs a different color because we have stamping blends in Daffodil Delight, Call Me Clover, and Poppy Parade. So if you wanted to put that along the bottom here, that would be great because we have all the colors that coordinate. So once again, you can get excited thinking about this new Making Christmas Bright bundle that's gonna be on page seven of the holiday catalog, and it will be ready to be ordered on September 5th. So if you have any questions, you can always email me at cindyleeb at gmail.com. Visit my blog, cindyleebdesigns.com. There you will find all the materials, measurements, colors that I use to make this card. Thanks for buzzing by, friends.